Hello, hello. Welcome to the Eddie Conversation Podcast. My name is Eddie V. Hill, and I am your host. Uh, this is episode number 66. And joining me uh, once again is Emily Ziam. Hello. How are you? Yes, I'm doing good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Last time, uh, this is the second time that uh, that we've that we've had our our chats over this conversation podcast. Last time, I introduced you as an, a, a microbiology immunologist scientist. You're also a model, and um, these days, I have seen you uh, labeled as an influencer as well. Um, so, <laughs> who labeled me as that? I don't influence anybody. Well, I mean, you're you have you have grown as of late in the in the like the TikToks in the in the Twitters. You've been kind of going. Your stuff has been grabbing in a way where I could see why somebody would think at a glance that oh, this is just you know, it's another influencer trying to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. Is that influencer that earned money? I'm just the kind of influencer that causes a lot of debate and they'll make money just sad but oh well one day <laughs> one day can I- okay so i'm trying to okay so the question today is because i know initially we talked and the idea was you know let's just you know let's just chat again let's talk what you you specifically i was looking uh talking on um, talking some rubbish talking silly is what um so it's it's a low it's a chill scenario here we have talked a lot about um like uh the modeling side and the scientist side with uh the the covid um well, development of the antibody tests and that sort of thing um today what i'm trying to figure out where to start because i want to hear i know you have a lot of opinions about a lot of things And I want to hear about, we can start in either one or two places, because it's kind of like the the surface level current stuff that's going on in your life. There's the the classic Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial that's going on, and you've been putting out just like, I'll call it thought pieces or just like blurbs. And, uh, And yeah, I don't know. How do you, what? What's going on there? I don't keep up with it as much. And it seems like you are for an obvious reason, potentially. But tell me more. Um, so the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp fight, let's say, has been going on for a few years. And me, like many other people, not really paid too much attention to it, apart from seeing it in the corner of your eye um, as you scroll through the news or social media. And my understanding over the last few years is that... Um, what I got from from the headlines and, and social media is that Amber Heard cried wolf and sort of tried to damage Johnny's reputation. And I thought, okay, well, that's that's what it is then. And then as I've heard about this court case coming up, being live streamed, I'm going through a court case myself. And I'm becoming a bit of a legal junkie. So I decided that I was going to watch the full thing. And so I started watching the full thing uh, whenever it was live and I was going through the whatever documentation was available online. And very quickly, I switched my opinion drastically, um, drastically. And I this I saw that, OK, well, I think I'm siding with Amber Heard. How strange is that? Like, I did not think that that was that's what was going to happen. And then as I go on TikTok and Instagram, I only see things are very heavily siding with Johnny. And I thought, am I the only person? So I made a TikTok about that, thinking um, that nobody was gonna look at it. That was something silly. And then I posted it and very quickly went, it exploded um, and became very much out of control. <laughs> okay, so do you wanna share? Okay, now for those that aren't watching the entire t of the publicness of the trial and everything um <clears throat> i don't know if you want to jump into specific detail on the play-by-play on on 
how you got to the point to making the TikTok and then we can talk about the aftermath of the TikTok and like what that looks like too. Um, yeah, I guess just for the additional context. Um, so once I, well, I don't know where to begin. That was extensive. Um, but within, so the trial is um, a defamation trials. Uh, Amber was working with a charity, which she, uh, pledged her uh, money to and that charity asked her to write an open ed and she did and she talked about uh, being a domestic violence survivor in that open ed and Johnny Depp is suing her for for that open ed saying that that was defamatory of his character and he decided to do so in Virginia um, reason being it's live streamed and he wanted people to see his truth. Uh, that's what he said. And um, it's been a circus since. Uh, when I posted a TikTok, it was very early days and um, it wasn't as big as it is now. I didn't think it was gonna be as big as it is now. I didn't think people were gonna care, but apparently they do very much care about this. And um, once I posted a TikTok, um, the first thing I noticed that I got flooded with very aggressive comments um, and they were not always aggressively defending it a cause. They were quite often aggressively, aggressively um, offending me as a person. Um, and that's, to be honest, on TikTok, well, that's kind of normal. There's a lot of um, faceless individuals there or, you know, um, a lot of emotionally mature people just dumping their thoughts. So I didn't take that into heart because um it's coming but then as time went by I started to realize there were certain comments sometimes two three sentences long that were exactly the same um and then I'll go into the profile and realize that's a, a fresh bot account um quite often zero followers uh following zero people zero likes it's just an empty account so several empty accounts making the exact same comments was something that was just too coincidental for me um, to be to be true. So um, yeah, that, that was a weird thing. And, and I still get flooded with those. And I try to block as many as possible at first because I thought, what are these bots doing here? Uh, but once I realized that um, the bots were part of um, Ember's <laughs> Counter suing of Johnny, I started trying to screenshot some of them and um, also the aggression of some fans. Um, it's been very intense. It's been very intense, I have to say. They go from my TikToks, they go into my Instagram DMs and then send offenses there. And um, yeah, it's just so bizarre for me that just defending a person could, <laughs> could cause so much turmoil. Yes. So, uh, yes. Um, Oh, sorry. I, yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now, it is interesting, I guess, overall on the, how interested people are in the trial in the first place as, as a whole. Um, and yeah, I guess when I normally see stuff, like you kind of said, if I am seeing anything, it's normally in defense of Johnny Depp. So uh, did you find, um, okay, so there's the, there's the whole thing about the bots, there's the whole thing about the comments and people coming at you <laughs> versus, versus like just the direct attacks that you versus addressing the topic being discussed in the first place. Um, but have you found that, okay, because you said, I'm not sure if I'm the only person thinking thinking this way so did you find that there were other people coming out of the woodwork saying oh my gosh no I, I do have the same opinion and I feel seen now or that like that sort of stuff is that happening um straight away I got warned by a few people that um his his fans were everywhere and they would just pop out of thin air um but then as time went by, I started getting a lot of people anonymously telling me, not anonymously, but, um, you know, that they, they were DMing me with their own profiles, but they were asking me, please don't tell this to anyone. 
but I completely agree. This is um, this is really weird, and I completely agree with you. And um, later after that, more recently, I've found a lovely community of um, of people who are starting to stand up and, and realize that there's something um, going on there that's not quite right. Um, but yeah, more and more, um, as I'm as the trial goes by, um, I see people come to me and then see me as a point of reference and say you know Emily this is this is what I think and I completely agree with you but I'm not brave enough to put my face to it like you are um the not brave is, is is the right word I think I didn't have an option and now I'm I'm here I might as well play it yeah I feel yeah uh okay yeah that okay so I'm imagining so I, I was thinking back to when I first saw I because I saw your post when you first put it up I, I don't know I, cause I'm not on TikTok so you said it was TikTok first or something I thought it was like a meme template or whatever initially like it was a photo wasn't it wasn't it just a photo I, or like a it was just me wait 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 um just mimicking an audio uh, okay. that I found and he said, the more I look into the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial, the more I side with Amber Heard or something of the kind. That, that's what was written there. Um, and I posted it early April, I believe. Yeah. So when I saw it, my interpretation of it immediately was that this, I wasn't even sure how serious, because it like, you, okay, I wasn't sure how serious that the, the post even was. It seemed kind of like a half joke, half like, not a hundred percent. It seemed like a, it wasn't like a definitive, a super definitive stance. It, it's, it was. yeah. So I know, I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't take much of when you put just to me specifically, but um, it is interesting too, because this is another thing, like we didn't retextualize it in this conversation, but we're doing zoom specifically currently right now, because we're across the globe from each other. I'm in Los Angeles. I don't even know. Are you in, uh, in Scotland currently? Or I know you're traveling a lot of these days. Sorry. I'm in Norway. Norway. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Great. Um, I'm always sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to solve our our uh, audio overlap here. I know we're we're cutting off when uh, we uh. So. <clears throat> um but okay the other thing that i think about too when you bring that up and i don't know if, if you have any thoughts on this because it, it seems like you're not it seems like you may have an opinion on it is even when i talk to people in the real world and i'm talking to them about coming onto the podcast just to have you know a casual conversation about hey working in film and opinions and filmmaking and and that sort of stuff sometimes people will counter with like I like I don't want to get canceled, and I don't. I feel like my opinions are something that are gonna get me in trouble, and people will actively kind of silence themselves in certain ways and not share thoughts because, again, like the world we live in, in which uh, there is a possibility, kind of like what's happening to you on TikTok or Twitter or, or elsewhere, that a horde can come at you out of nowhere. Um, but uh, yeah, so like when people are reaching out to you and saying, oh, I like don't tell anybody that I'm talking to you about this, but I like what you're saying. That's weird, a little bit weird to me that they're, that people aren't comfortable with sharing opinions. But how do you feel about that in general? How do you approach it? I mean, I understand that a lot of people make a living out of their, um, their image and they can't really compromise that. And I do think that it is a good thing to keep your opinions to yourself at times. I think there are, there are times that, you know, it is important to do that um, because, you know, your image is not always, doesn't always have to be attached to, to what you think. But I, in this case, once I put out this video, you know, I did not want to, um, it, it was a, a silly opinion. I didn't think it mattered. But the more I looked into the case and the more I realized what this really was about, the more I felt like 
there needs to be somebody that stands up for this. There needs to be somebody that puts their face to it. And a few other individuals have done it, but um, the, the mob that comes at you is so strong that the fear of putting your face is just too high. And it's only a few individuals that have been brave enough to do it. And I thought to myself, I think I can be one of these people and I'm already here. So um, I'm going to step up to the role. And so I did. Um, I wouldn't be giving my opinions on politics or anything of the kind because I do not, I do have opinions on that, but I do not feel like it would be appropriate for me to do so. But in this case, I do feel like I can speak on it. Um, I've experienced, you know, something quite similar. And I do think that, um, not only I can speak on it, but I feel like my opinion should be shared on the situation. Great. Yeah, because I know I know for this one kind of like you you kind of said is you um you fell into it in a way where it it wasn't a purposeful act of stepping into said role. You're just you just happen to be in it and now you're now you're owning it. Yeah. <clears throat> um so I guess just to maybe move into staying in the same topic but talking about you kind of hinted at um what it's really about or like the, the the real consequences or the the potential further down the line consequences of what's going on currently specifically with this trial that may affect other people down the road uh what are some takeaways that could be helpful for other people to become more aware of too when a little bit more context on when they view this sort of thing. So you mean like consequences about people speaking out about their opinion? No, I'm talking about the, I guess the, the trial specifically and what the trial is actually, what's actually going on and, and the, um, the whole defamation case aspect of it and why we're even there and what, uh, what's, what these people are going through too is another, is another thing. I feel like in the world right now, there is a big, abuse litigation by people with power and money and that needs to be something that's looked at because you know Amber Heard and Johnny Depp situation it, it's not it's not the only one and there's loads of out of that kind of case out there and you're using taxpayers money and to sort of abuse the system in a way um, to bring on these kind of cases and the legal system should be taken more seriously and should not be mishandled like that. And I think that's a takeaway from that case. You know, bringing a couple's intimate life to the public, like, you know, like it's being done, is not a great thing at all and it's not great for survivors. You know, it doesn't matter whose side you are on. I think we have to agree that this entire case being such a disfavor to survivors in general. You know, there's there's a couple of people I follow that are from charities and they they started posting out saying how a lot of victims will be afraid of speaking up because they do not want to be mocked, like Ember is being mocked. And that's been the case for me too. I mean, um, when, so I was, I'm a victim of, of, of assault. So my sister was in a really abusive uh, marriage for, well, she was only married for six months, but she was in a relationship for 10 years. And then they finally married. And then six months later, they broke up. And just before they broke up, um, this person assaulted me as a punishment to my sister. Now, Throughout her marriage, I I was with her constantly. Um, we were quite close and oftentimes I stayed in her house for days and I never noticed what she was going through. Um, I would see things here and there, but um, I did not realize what was really happening uh, when I wasn't there. And when once the marriage was over and you know everything came to light, I felt really guilty and I felt awful uh, for not noticing it. I mean, the bruises were never big enough for me to think that was something going on because he knew that people would see that. Um, so he knew how, how far he could go. And then once the, 
the relationship was over he put it in a way that she somehow looked like she was a terrible person can i say can i say curse word uh yeah sure she she made it, her look like a bitch you know like a, a terrible person and she was you know she absolutely isn't i mean she is my sister don't get me wrong we fight a lot um and she can be really annoying sometimes but he painted a terrible picture of her so he could get out clean um without you know anybody to to ruin her credibility basically um and i just feel like had he seen what's going on right now he would have sued her to sort of like con- control her um at the time like i mean her divorce been a long time ago um but if i do feel like this is something he could have done and later on we did i did come out about my assault it took me quite a while for me to be able to be open about it but um I did not want to talk about my assault and I was 14 at the time and this man had known me since I was four or five years old so it was horrifying but the way my sister was mocked and made fun of and not believed because this man was a charismatic person made me feel so afraid to come out about my story because I thought I'm gonna be mocked like she was I'm not gonna be believed he's gonna find a way to discredit me you know and once I was brave enough to come out um, to authorities, he was he was always mocking the whole situation, always very sarcastic about everything. And that really triggered me. And um, I feel like this sort of behavior is repeated elsewhere um, in the world. It's, you know, it's a pattern, isn't it? Sorry, I didn't know it was gonna get this heavy. I don't know, like we just slipped into this, I'm sorry. Oh. Told you I was- no, it's uh, no. I appreciate the the sharing because uh, yeah, I mean that's <clears throat> unfortunately uh, yes. The the it's the it's the classic story of power and control, and um, we as a society have put certain systems in place for other reasons. And but yeah, if you are in a position sometimes you can exploit these, these situations and it is kind of, yeah, no, that's the, that stuff's never, no, it's, that's not fun at all. Um, I think about, and we, cause we're not, you mentioned that your sister went through a divorce with this, with this guy, but I was thinking about like divorce in general too, where I was thinking about like when there's like kids involved or it always turns into like the, uh, even just yeah normal day-to-day people it happens to turn into like who's a better parent and you have to make the other person look bad and it turns into the game of this for and it happens for lots of reasons but um i don't yeah that it's uh yes heavy stuff <laughs> it doesn't happen that way i mean i went through a divorce and my ex-husband is lovely and we're still best friends up to today and it's great um but yeah, there are sometimes the person that you marry is not always the person you divorce, unfortunately. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm thinking about um uh I guess in general with again kind of maybe going back to um Amber Heard and Johnny Depp is when it feels like I don't quite like, and I don't, okay, I'm not saying that, she, I don't want to, I don't want to imply that you're doing this because it feels like you're doing this for a different reason, but it almost feels like they're not real people and we're watching a show and we're like picking sides or having fun with it. And it's like, no, these are real people that went through real stuff and it's a losing situation kind of for both of them. It's not, it's not like nobody's going to come out really as a winner. They're both like you said, their personal lives are being pulled out of them. And it's stuff that probably neither of them wanted to have to, none of them wanted to go through this, I'm sure. It's my, it's my, it's my gut because they're both being just pulled through everything on both ends. But I'm trying to think about society in general a little bit and why people are fascinated with 
this sort of story versus like there's there's bigger, more important things happening in the world. But for some reason, this is what we're being drawn to. And by we as in like we as we as a people. Uh, I mean, I have my own theories on that in general, but uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on on maybe that before I. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right right now that needs more attention than what this is getting. Um, I mean, we have, speak about court case, we have the Maxwell case, we have what's going on in Ukraine right now, and yet we're here watching a couple fight using the court system. It's not great. Um, it's not great at all. Um, but yeah, I do have... I do have a few opinions on that, but again, it's a bit more political. I don't know if the world is there as much. But what is your opinion, Eddie? Come on, uh, get cancelled with me. Oh no, 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 no. My opinion, no. It's very simple. It's it's just more of a human nature observation where I feel like because this this came up. I think I saw some, uh, like a Facebook friend was posting about the because it was the whole Will Smith and uh, and Chris Rock Oscars thing too, which took the took the world by storm for a few weeks or something crazy like that or like a week or whatever which is like in uh, super long in today's today's world but i know somebody was pointing out like why are we talking about this and we're not talking like nobody's checking up on the war in ukraine or whatever like whatever's going on so <clears throat> my thought was i think i commented on the thing too was these scenarios are very approachable like if you think about even just watching content in general like sometimes you just want the the easy you want the easy thing to watch you don't want to think too hard you don't want to be challenged in ways you just want to watch something and enjoy it and the something as simple as uh yeah a couple trying to the the defame each other is a little bit more approachable than the higher stakes, like, I, I, I think about the people that reach out to you about opinions too, is it's easier to have an opinion on, should this guy have slapped this other guy? Was that right? Like, it's an easy opinion to have. It's like, well, I think a man should blah, blah, blah. Um, versus I think the political system in this country should be, a, you know, so it's just about approachability and simplicity. And it's, um, it's, it's, just easier i guess is my simple explanation it's easier to 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 have thoughts and to care about it it's just easy stuff very basic stuff that's not very it's not rocket science here <laughs> but yeah you're completely right i had not thought about it that way i do not think that this was an approachability issue but now that you say that that's bingo that's absolutely right it's much easier to look into this than have to look into something where we have to use our critical thinking. Um, and I, I was going to go with, you know, sometimes you don't want to look at the horrible things that are going on in the world. And although this is pretty horrible in itself, it's not as bad. So I guess in a way that, you know, it's taking the, the easier route as well. Sorry, I'm so distracted looking outside. I'm generally a person that looks around as I'm talking to people, but there is a marathon going on right outside my house. So I live by a lake and around the lake, uh, there seems to be marathons going on every now and then. And I don't know what's happening. And a bunch of people come park right outside of my house because I've got like a good space um, to park and it becomes like a parking lot. Mm. And and they go around the lake on this marathon. They've got numbers. They've got everything. There's people looking at, you know, registering them. And there's a whole thing. And I've got no idea what it is. I've only been here for, what, a couple of months now. And I need to find out because it's really bizarre. So the signups, the signups are right outside. Like there's literally the desks being set up right outside your place. Like you can, like right there. No. So the cars are here. And then the signups are... I don't know where they are, but every now and then I see a person um, come by running and there are, sometimes there are kids. There must be some sort of charity stuff. I don't think it's serious, but it's, it's so distracting. I'm like, what, what in the world is happening? Yeah. You got, you got to go out there and uh, just do the classic run by next to them and ask them questions about like, so what's this for? What's going on? 
talk about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> Yeah, I think about uh, I think about Forrest Gump when I think about the runners tagging along and just check, hey, why are you running? I know. I feel like I'm tired just looking at them. Just look. I'm not making this up. Can I turn okay. this camera? Sure. This Give it a shot. Oh, look at this. Oh, there they are. So these ones, you see, these ones don't even have numbers. There are some of them that got numbers. Okay. We, I, I, I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> okay now um i think we can segue to the next topic unless you have any burning burning thoughts no i think we talked we talked good we got heavy i don't know what <laughs> we got heavy we went we went deep into that topic <laughs> no i don't think i think okay well if i'm gonna leave with no, is that um, it doesn't matter what side you're in. It doesn't matter um, who you think is lying and who you think is not. I think that, yeah, it, it doesn't matter whose side you're on and what opinion you have on the case. Abusing and mocking people, bullying them is never okay. It doesn't matter who they are. And... I see a lot of people excusing themselves and using this case as a pass to scream out incredibly inappropriate things and hurtful things to a person. And I've never seen the same heavy judgment go towards abusers like Weinstein or um, a lot of other Hollywood, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to drop a name. I just realized I did and I'm like, oh, don't say anymore. But a lot of other abusers that um, done very, very serious things. And I think that we should think about that as a society. Yes, that's that's good advice. It's good advice. It's, I mean, that's, yeah, I, I hear that. Yeah, it's it's so difficult to manage manage society's energies and where to direct them and how to direct them and how to, how to utilize them properly and it's like all right well we should recontextualize in our head the importance of such things it's, it is a lot of it's a lot of thinking and sometimes again people stray towards the easy but let's let's challenge ourselves people it's uh yeah that's great yeah by the way can you even understand what i'm saying it's the first time i speak english today and it's lagging a bit <laughs> Your English has been many feet, if I may say. I know I've been understanding you. I don't. I can't speak for everybody, but sorry, you broke. You broke up on that one. I'm just asking if I sound eloquent. Probably not, but yeah, I'll I keep think, trying. Yeah, very eloquent. And the space you're in right now looks beautiful too. I like the. I like the framing that you have for us here. The linings, the line in the frame through your head. It really brings our attention to, like, it's really good. It's very artsy. You like the way I'm sitting? It's, um... <laughs> oh. it's all good. All good. <clears throat> okay. So moving on. Um, let's, uh, okay. I want to talk a little bit because a lot of, of course, a lot of our experience, a lot of my experience with you is kind of just observing you with your Instagram too. Like I see how you post and I see how you handle your stories and um, like you do Q and like you do like the, not like Q and A's, but like the, like the, like the, yeah, where you'll be like, tell me about your, um, tell me about your worst dates, your worst first dates, and then people would just submit stuff to you. Can you tell me a little bit about, um, oh, before jumping into that, I do want to credit you for your social media acumen. You do put a lot of social media effort in. Like, I know you sometimes post where you're like, I'm sorry for not being better at messaging. And I want to, like, you really put an effort into like, I don't know, just responding to people and stuff and, and getting into that. So I don't feel like we talked about that last time, but talking a little bit about that and then like the, I'm curious about what you get out of those, those, those nice, those nice uh, story time posts. Oh. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, when it comes to interacting with people, I, I love doing that. And I think that is very rude if I, if I message someone on Instagram and they don't message back, um, I feel really sad. So what I do is that I try my best to answer as many people as I can, as much as I can. Um, there is an illustrator called Yurka. Um, he does a lot of Disney illustrations, he's Spanish. And he, I took this from him because he interacts a lot with his followers. And whenever you message him, he answers straight away. Even if you can see he's having a busy time with his stories, even if it's just an emoji, he'll always answer back um, to people. And I did a test and he really does. Um, and I thought, you know, people can be nice. It's okay to be nice. So I try my best to answer as many people as I can and, and interact and talk because at the end of the day, they are people um, and they've got feelings and I don't want to hurt them. Um, so I, yeah, I try my best. And whenever I'm not able to get to everybody, um, it's funny because like my interaction is not that high, but the amount of DMs I get oftentimes can, can go crazy. So I try to answer as many people as I can. And um, and if I'm not able to, then I'll, I'll try to do some sort of stories interaction where they, they can feel like they're interacting with me. Yeah, that, no, that makes sense. That's kind of, I feel very similarly to that. It's prom, yeah, where, again, I think a lot about how I feel in the same situation with like, I really appreciate when people respond to me. I don't think, I don't have the inf inflow that you have, I don't think, but I do try to, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I do appreciate the more um, human interaction back and forth versus like, yeah, people appreciate it, I guess is more of the point, making people feel good about being heard and seen and responding back. I think it's a, it's a nice, lovely thing. Uh, so yeah, again, curious about, um the why and then the what you get out of it with because there's multiple topics you've gone over I mentioned like the bad first dates but you've done you've done multiple before so what is what is what is this for the bad first dates I had seen this guy Josh something singer do it on Instagram and he does some really funny videos uh, tick, uh TikToks and reels and I started following him and he did this on his stories and I thought it was hilarious the kind of stories he got back I thought it was really funny and I and I've been trying to interact with my followers by doing Q&A's but that's really boring I mean you know surely some people who want to know what zodiac sign I am but I mean that would give me the way of entertaining people as well as um interacting with some others so I started doing that and it paid off so well because some of the stories I hear are absolutely hilarious I get a lot of people who don't do the answer the question box they will dm me and tell me do not tell this to anybody a lot of my friends personal friends would do this too where they would be like don't tell this to anybody but this and that happened and the stories are great they're great they're so entertaining and um to be honest, it made me feel really, really afraid of um, dating people. <laughs> wow. Okay. But yeah, nevertheless, they're entertaining. Okay. So yeah, it makes sense. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a double, it's a great excuse to, again, uh, have the followers feel like they're having this interaction. <laughs> oh, I'll followers, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, people get to interact. And also, like you said, Q&As, I feel, I, I, I agree, a Q&A feels a little bit one-sided, um, where it's like, hey, that, like, what do you want to know about me? Let me talk about myself. And it's like, well, actually, I want to know about you. Tell me, tell me some of your stories. And then people love sharing stories, and they can share the good ones, and you get, you get the best of the best. Hopefully, they're, I'm sure, I don't know if there's any duds that come in, where it's like, okay, eh, next, eh heard that one before but um I've learned, there's a lot of um a lot of the ones that i share people have gone through the same thing yeah and i love different ones like bizarre stories but the majority that comes in are the same where um it's a guy or a girl doing you know 
dating an extensive amount of people um and an encounter happening so it's a lot of like um I went on a date with a girl in the pub and then came back and she was <laughs> she was in another date or um bumped into the girl later on in the day she was on another date and you know these stories they come in all the time and I I, I don't always share them anymore because I'm like, nah, I need, I need a better kick. Um, <laughs> um, and then also guys, you know, messaging or, or trying to date um, women within the same friend group always, always happens. Always got those too. Um, but every now and then I'll, I'll get a bizarre one. I think my favorite one that I have, and it's actually from one of my friends and I don't know if I can say her name, but she's one of my friends. She's a photographer and it's about, um, they were doing, they, they were in the eating in the restaurant in the first day, and it was um, the restaurant had a chicken bucket eating competition or challenge in the restaurant, and um, the person that was doing it uh, was going to be sick, so they had to hand over their bucket of their um, their meal for this person to be sick sick right next to them, and uh, I think that one was good because she told me the whole thing and it was brilliant, um, but yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I was. <clears throat> so I'm trying to. So okay. I, I feel like there were some details that were missing from the the chicken challenge there. But so she. So she was on this date. The 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 date that the guy. I'm assuming she was on a date with a guy, and the guy was going through the chicken challenge and he couldn't make it. Or what's the it was a person sitting next to them that was going through the chicken challenge and the guy that she was with handed over the bucket from their table for this person to be sick okay. on. And I think that, that was, that was a really good one. That was extraordinary. Um, but yeah, there's, it's just really crazy to see what um, other people experience. Sometimes I, get a lot of, um, as I said, you know, people dating multiple, but um, most recently I've got this and um, it was from one of my previous coworkers and she's talking about another, um, another job she's got now. She's moved on from the same job that we had and then she's in a new one right now. And she said that she went um, on a date with somebody on, on a Sunday and then on the Monday she went to work and she was telling her colleagues about it and um one of the other colleagues said oh you know I went on a date with a guy from the same um areas as your guy on a Friday and uh he said that um you know he was super love bombing and he said that I reminded him of um this family member and uh how I was you know this could work out because this isn't that. And she said, well, that, that's weird. This guy also said that I reminded him of same, you know, same, a family member like that. And uh, also reminded him X, Y, and Z. And then they went to look at the person and indeed it was the same person. And um, however, these two women were complete opposite. And he specifically said, do you look like this family member, like your looks? So, um, yeah, uh, it's from what they put together, it seems like he was going through a script every time he met a, a girl. And um, I think that was brilliant. Um, I mean, I don't know if that script really works, but it must because he's using it a lot. I mean, it didn't work with them, obviously. Uh, what are the chances of that happening? But um, yeah, it was great. So, was yeah, I'm imagining, okay, yeah, he wouldn't be, you, you would think that the script must be working if he's continuing to use it. I'm, I'm thinking, was the script working on them? I mean, until they found out that it was a script, was it working on them? And then their, their united story is like, oh, the, the illusion comes down. But before that, they're both like, I'm excited for a date number two. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's, I think they must have been. I mean, if you're coming to work on a Monday, excited to tell your coworkers about how the date went, it must have been working. Yeah. <clears throat> so what are the takeaways? Takeaway. Because, like because. Oh. I'd be really, really skeptical every time I'm going to, but then I don't want to 
I don't want people to stop believing in love. I want them to be romantic and just to give themselves fully. Um, but it's it's raised my level of skepticism. I feel like I always I've always been a skeptical person in general. Um, but I think this yeah this definitely raised my levels. And I don't want other people to do that. Just the takeaway for me is to not keep those bad encounters in mind because you know people don't always talk about the normal and the good ones just date full heartedly don't play people they're gonna find out yeah i i would say that that's that's the i feel like that's probably the best way of going about it um yes because i feel like Well, I guess because like I was tell us telling you about it because you he had reached out asking about what, what was new. And I told you that I just started dating somebody. And that was like a couple months ago. We're still we're still together. Congratulations to me. Thank you. Um, but I know let's just say when you yeah, so that's the best you can do, really, is you don't want to you you it's easy to sniff out the guy with the script I feel like if you're entering in the and you're probably good at this anyway it's just entering in with the authenticity and then you can immediately tell it's like well because it you're like oh cool tell me more about this family <laughs> you might even just ask more about this and then pull pull the rug out from under them because you're like really curious about like oh really like I want to hear more about tell me all about her how is telling a girl that she looks like a family member like an attractive thing that's so cringe okay yeah I didn't think about that too much when you initially brought it up but yeah as long as it's I was more thinking about it as it really special to him and then helped him and his family in a difficult moment it was announced just to clarify it was not his mom it was not his mom weird. still weird yeah, not his mom, not his sister. Um, Cross all the wor worst ones, but still his aunt is still pretty weird. I don't know. That is weird. Yes, that what? is weird. I could be. And it just coincidentally, you know, maybe it was just more coincidences than we think it was. And maybe he was being truthful. Who knows? I mean, it could also be, hear me out, it could be a deterrent line as well, where if you're not really into somebody, you bring up like, not, not that this is not, not something I endorse, but I feel like somebody would be like, oh, like you smell a lot like my sister, actually. You're like, you really remind me a lot of like, you know, the tendency you just, oh, you're like, you're just like, you're totally like my sister. I don't know if this is going to, this, this might be a little, like that could be a deterrent subtle with the ant but uh, I feel like it's definitely classic dude to script out a date I feel like uh dating is hard and I could understand from the male perspective like you practice you try out different lines on each date and you craft your script and you're like okay they responded well to this line I'm workshopping this and you kind of just you're hoping that at least gives you a foundation to build off of in which then you can be your genuine self once you've laid that foundation. <laughs> but it's just- I, The script right now, Eddie. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Are you telling me right now that you use a script? I do not use a script. I'm just saying I could empathize with the guy who thinks using a script could be helpful. A previous, a previous version of me might've been, might've, might've, been more open to that like college like college days eddie like early 20s eddie like he needed all the help he can get in those fields so like going in with some go-to lines could be useful you know <laughs> I, it's tough sometimes i get it i get it you need to play with the, the weapons you're given sometimes it's a script um but yeah it's weird i don't know i don't feel like i don't think that anyone that i've gone on a date with has had a script apart from this one person I feel like everyone else sort of just tried their best I, I don't have like I've not been single very much in 
adult life. So I don't know, but there was this one person who was very obviously using a script. And um, the, like, I've noticed it straight away, straight off the bat, um, it was sort of um, his script was not allowing for the breaks that it should have, if you know what I mean. Like he should have said certain things and then waited for my reaction to see like, oh, you know, this isn't that. But he just went, because I was late as well. So he just went and shot all the scripts in one go. And I was like, looking like, okay, well, this is a script. This is script. Yeah, I think about like there's the, again talking about social media bots. Like I don't know if if women get these, but like guys will get like the DM from like a pretty girl, and she'll be like she'll have like a a text line of dialogue and like hey, uh, sorry to just bump in randomly to your to your DMs here, but how's it going? And then whatever your response, it doesn't matter. Like they have the botted response to that, and then there's so yeah. Exactly how my date went. It didn't matter what the reply was. It was, you know, always the next step in the script. It was like I was speaking with a bot, but in person, it was it was star. Yeah, that's that's not recommending that. There should be it should be the you know, <clears throat> I guess okay. It's it's very much like acting in a movie. Is uh, you, you're given your lines, but. I like to I like to keep room for the improv. So the guy should have, you know, probably gone to some improv classes, and that would have helped him out. But either way, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, like you get um, men get these bots. Um, women get a lot of sugar daddy scam, um, and uh, they're great. Um, they're absolutely great. I. Every now and then I'll get um, this cam, like, would you like to become a model? Have you ever thought about being paid for your pictures? <laughs> um, but yeah, I get that and the sugar daddy ones. I have seen some lady friend DMs with the, with the sugar daddies for sure. And there's like usually a rate attached to like a weekly rate or something like that. It's like, I'll give you 500 a week to blah, 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 blah. Just send me photos of blah. Or I don't know what they're asking for really, but I don't know how that goes. Um, yeah, no, I've never really entertained them, but I've had, um, I mean, as a model, you get all sorts of DMs sometimes, um, which can be bizarre. Um, but I have once gotten this one guy, it looked like somebody's legitimate profile. So I thought, well, he's obviously being hacked. So he was messaging, like saying that he wanted to pay me a certain, it almost like looked like those, those scam DMs, you know? Um, and then I looked at the profile and I thought, well, this is odd. And um, I thought, well, this person is definitely being hacked. And then as I did not reply, he continued to message and I could see that it was not a bot. Like it was definitely a, a person on the other side. It was not automatically messages. But um, so I, I started interacting and seeing like what on earth was going on. But basically he said that he would like to help me by giving me a small allowance, but it was really small. It was something like 200 pounds a week or something like this. It was not like sugar daddy level. Um, but give me that and then come and help me do things around the house be my slave so I would do the he would do the groceries for me and the allowance like that would be including the allowance um and then he would come and like clean the house um do my gardening and stuff like that and I was like okay so is that like I was trying to understand what he would get from it and because I thought, surely this guy's not going to do the groceries, dump it at my door, like put some cash in my bank account or like come and clean my house and go while I'm at work. Like he definitely wants something from me. Like he's going to steal my panties. What's going to happen? My socks. <laughs> um, and I, I had all these thoughts in my mind. Maybe like he'll steal my shoes or something like that. But um, basically what he told me is that he wanted to do these things. But whilst I was with him, so he would do my groceries, but I'll have to go with him to the shops. 
um, he would clean my house, but I would have to be around the house and so on and so forth, um, which is incredibly terrifying. But um, I just gave him some important life advice advice and sent him on. Just don't don't bother with this. Look for real relationships. Don't. <laughs> and sent him on his merry way. I feel you. Yeah, that was weird. That's but yeah. So and, and then and then bah, it ended up being a real person, and you were trying to solve that riddle. That is. Uh, that is, yeah. I'm, you're good. Good on you to uh, diagnose the issue and then and then give your uh, give your life advice. I hope hopefully that helped them because that's it is very helpful to to hear uh, that sort of stuff. So hopefully he took it to heart. We'll have to check back in with him later and see where he. <laughs> this was years ago. I don't know um, if I would even remember. Um... Let's hope he still exists and that he still follows me. Um, that's good, good thinking, actually. I'll try to look out for him. Yeah, well, and then we'll, we'll report back on that. Speaking of reporting back, <laughs> I want to check in on some stuff we talked about in our last conversation. Now, the big one that was really exciting at the time, and I know we checked in a little bit on it, but you're talking about wanting to start a, a scientific journal. And I wanted to check in on how that's going or if, or if it's going at all currently, what, what's, what's happening? It's going well. So I, my goodness, that's been so much more work than I ever thought it would be. Um, I've sort of, um, it's growing arms and legs, um, the amount of, um, of work that that's required. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been going well and, um, got some funding in and we're working on several things and all this week I've, I've been working a lot on this project so it's going great um we're gonna build our website and um, we've been looking into like different methods to approach it and try to um try to do something different in science whereas all scientific products and databases they're not user-friendly i don't find them user-friendly other people don't find them user-friendly and it shouldn't have to be a struggle so we're trying to approach it in a way to make this um very very user-friendly which is uh, going to require some extra work but that's absolutely fine so we're gonna we're working with other companies now to try and like tertiary, like you know to outsource their their expertise and yeah it's really exciting actually doing something for myself and um, when i started doing this i thought i could do it easily and uh, I thought oh I just need this this and that but as I got into I realized how much knowledge I lacked and me as a professional I like to understand the whole situation I like to be on top of on top of things and and um be on my best self and I felt like I wasn't being able to do that so I started an MBA um so I've been doing that for a while now and and I absolutely love it um, and that's sort of helping me with knowledge that I can take onto this idea. Yeah, got my business hat on, and it's great. So you started your you started an MBA. I know it's so random. <laughs> that's wow. Yeah, dedication, dedication. Um, no, it's awesome. So where? Okay, I know we talked. I feel like we talked about it maybe a little bit in text form, but if you want to potentially elaborate on where the roadblocks are coming or where the difficulties were, maybe what the what the most surprising parts of this endeavor have been, and maybe because I'm I'm taking it, I'm trying to utilize that information as to why this thing doesn't already exist. I'm assuming because it is difficult to compile stuff and get the proper people involved. But how is there any? Yeah, do you want to jump into specifics maybe or? A lot of scientists, they don't have, that, that use um, these sort of services on a daily basis, they not always have the entrepreneurial mind that will take them to build something of the kind. And a lot of the people that have a scientific background, but are much more entrepreneurial, they not always have the insights of a scientist. You know what I mean? So it's two different um types of people and um because they don't often merge and they don't often share ideas what will happen is that 
a lot of scientific products they're not as well developed because there are no businesses working on it and a lot of um business initiatives that are for science are not really that useful within uh, the scientific community um but also there is a really big issue with publication bias in science where there are certain journals that are extremely elitist and you know certain topics and certain researchers will always have a better chance at being published than other topics and other researchers so a lot of research gets you know gets lost in the cutting room floor because of that and never ends up anywhere um there has been attempts and there are established databases like that in other fields of science not so much in the medical science but there has been attempts similar but it never really takes off so our strategy here is to make sure that our army is set up before we um take the field um sort of a thing to um make sure it really gets out there at its optimal form to encourage everyone to start using it straight away and make sure that there are no more publication bias and that every piece of research is seen as valuable as you know somebody for a well-established researcher from Oxford has been publishing the exact same sexy topic for 10 years, but it's not necessarily useful anymore because nothing is really advancing and it is always the same um, update. Whereas like there are certain people from a small college that done amazing research, but it's not able to, it's not able to make its way out there into the world because the researcher is not good enough or they've never had publications done before. So they don't have a name on, that's recognizable i want to make sure that everything is seen yeah and that 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 all adds up to me that all makes sense i i'm, I'm translating in my brain is in the filmmaking in the filmmaking in the space where it's kind of like you have the you have the big budget movies that can afford all the marketing and can put their their stuff in front of everybody and then like there's the little like the the smaller indie theaters that want to showcase the independent artists and want to want to give them a a space to the independent artist spaces are harder to keep funded like that's usually where the issues come in and that's why the the money stuff is helpful um no it makes sense that you want to support the I'm trying to figure out why why those normally crumble is because is is it like the bigger the bigger articles are almost pseudo pseudo funding the outlets that are taking them or how does this feels like a funding issue is is what but I don't know if that's the, the case um yeah well certain polls will have much better funding they'll much have much better chances of being published where certain polls won't have as much funding and won't have as much chances of, of putting their work out there um, and should be equal. I mean, especially when it's research because you don't know where good ideas are gonna come from. My main issue is that you look at journals, you look at publications, always the same update. There's nothing, you know, certain researchers are being forced to publish on exact same topic two, three times a year because they need to publish you know, they're being forced by the institutes like you need to put research out there so we can get funding. Um, mm -hmm. But not necessarily helping anything. It's just adding, adding more empty papers out there and just making people's um, search harder when they use the search engines for scientific papers. Um, and yeah, I want to make sure that no piece of information that's crucial for scientific advancements is lost because somebody wasn't able to publish their paper. Um, so hopefully um, we'll be able to set this up within the next few months, which is exciting times. Okay, I was gonna ask about timeline, but yeah, next few months. Next. Watch this. All right, no, that's very exciting, very cool. Um, Okay, so there's that. We have uh, talked about random topics. Have you know, this is so random. I don't know what you're gonna title this, but good luck. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about everything here, um, which I enjoy. 
Okay. As well, ADHD brain. <laughs> so, are you, um, I guess, a couple in the update realm as well? Are you, uh, how, how, last time we chatted, we talked about acting. We talked about wanting to look into acting and maybe try acting. Has anything happened since then? That was. Excuse me, and it's one temple. <laughs> Sorry, what? I thought you said acne. Oh, acting. Oh, my word. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you noticed. Um, <laughs> I, I was looking at acting, and it was something that... Um, had been creeping in the corners of my mind. I thought, well, I'm too old and wrinkly to model now. I'm approaching my 30s. Um, <laughs> the agencies don't want me anymore. Um, so I was looking at acting because that's kind of similar. And the times in modeling that I need to act, I really enjoyed it. And I was part of um, a small production in Glasgow uh, for a movie called The Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. I only have a very small part in it, but I loved every second. I really, really did. I've never done something that I enjoyed so much. Um, so I'm ever since then, I've not really like followed back because so much has happened in my life. Um, so I've spoken with a few friends who are into the acting world. Um, they also model and they sort of like gave me the tips and tricks of... Um, what to do, where to search for work and so on. So I was getting into it, but then an avalanche of, of things happened, but it's definitely something I'm wanting to pursue because um, I did really find it so fun. And I don't know if maybe that was just that role and other roles I'll find it incredibly boring, I don't know, but um, I do feel like I was born to lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're born to lie, okay. That's funny. Um, okay, so when was when was this labyrinth uh, experience? Um, last summer. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So I think we we maybe touched on it when we talked about it last time too. It's my gut, but I was curious. So so no, so no, I feel like you've been up to a lot since we last chatted. So I was I was going to be surprised if you were able to fit in uh, acting pursuits in the last, you know, eight months or so in there too. So that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, okay, you talk to me about, are you, how, how serious are you about um, starting your own podcast? Is that, is that, is that still, is that really a thing you wanna push talking to professionals? And what does that look like if you did it? So I started recording, um, I've recorded a few, um, a few sessions already and that's been really fun um it's been tricky trying to record it and trying to edit it luckily um a really good friend ryan who works with um documentary production and tv shows and he's been helping me with that but it's been a lot of fun and i love the idea of um knowing what goes on in people's professional lives because uh you know such a big part of their lives and not a lot of people talks in detail about what goes on into work and work drama <laughs> how your work life looks like in different jobs um so yeah, that's been exciting and recently i've worked I've, I've done one with my friend ewan who is a spy you talk to a spy a real life spy yes um, so that, that was really cool. Obviously, like, there's a lot of things he can't say, but he talked a lot about his life in the army prior to this job. Um, so that was, that was cool. That is, that does sound cool. I know I remember talking to like a private investigator on, on my podcast and I'm imagining my expectation when you say spy is the first thing the spy is going to say is, my job isn't as cool as you think my job is. And then they go into like how cool the job is afterwards. But like, that's how I imagine their initial is like, you know, we don't, I'm not James Bond now. or is James Bond a spy? <laughs> well, I mean, 
if I, he like this friend of mine he works for the government yeah so I, and he does not say oh my job's not as cool as you think you know he he owns up to it he's like it's really cool um and I, and I believe him and I, I always tell him look I need to I need to work with this as well um so my my plan for the future is to get a British passport and um and join his work and uh, we've joked about how I'm gonna be a honey trap <laughs> you're gonna be a honey trap what is that um from what I understood is um you know like you use somebody that doesn't look like they're a spy to sort of uh, trick somebody into just saying you're doing things and then boom, I'm a spy the okay. whole time. It kind of reminds me of, um, I don't know if you're, I don't remember if you're a Marvel fan or not, but it sounds very like Black Widow program kind of like stuff where the the whole narrative of the Black Widow program is that that women are often uh, not thought of as much and it's easy to use women to infiltrate spaces because because <laughs> of that world narrative uh honey trap okay <laughs> i'll be black widow <laughs> yeah there we go okay and what do you have so you've recorded some episodes is it um do you have a name for it or you have a release what, what's your is or is it just practice mode still what's going on I don't have a release date. Um, I really like to put the stuff that I have um, out soon, uh, but I don't have a release date yet. I don't know if like you should collect a certain amount so that I can have like it coming out weekly. I don't know what's my plan yet. Um, this whole trial's consumed me. I need to go back to the podcast. Yeah. And, but. Um, I think probably within the next couple of weeks, I'm going to, I'm going to launch it because I have enough conversations now that I feel like I could do something with it and I could keep it going for, for a few weeks to come. But I want to make sure that I, I release it steadily, you know, once a week or once, you know, fortnightly, or even if it's once a month, because I do feel like that sort of pattern is really helpful. Yeah. I feel like just speaking from my experience, Cause I do, I do the weekly releases and it's a lot of work to, okay. to do weekly. So monthly, I feel like with your, with your, with your load and all the stuff you got going on, I feel like monthly is a more approachable thing, but maybe try weekly. You can always pull back on it. It's not, you know, nobody's going to keep you accountable like you are. So you can, you can take as many breaks as, as you want or whatever, but sounds cool. I will, I will stay posted for that. <clears throat> Oh, hold me accountable for it. Don't come back in a month. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Eddie. I wasn't able to go through with it. <laughs> so you said, and, wait, sorry. Were you saying to hold you accountable or not to hold you accountable? Hold me accountable. Okay. All right. Done. Done. We are, we are winding down. I see our, see our clock ticking um, on this. Okay. We're on Zoom and it's ticking again for us here. Now I was imagining this is probably, I think, I think it's been, I think it's been good. I think it's been good. <laughs> um, so I'll wind us, I wind, I'll wind us out with uh, maybe one more quickie topic. Um, do you, did you finish? Did you, um, I hope this might take us over the edge, but uh did you come to a final conclusion on, I remember you were, you were kind of almost having a identity crisis uh, a little while ago about like, do people think I'm white was, was a thing that you, <laughs> that you had, uh, had voiced out to, uh, to the sphere. So where, where have you landed with that whole thing? I don't know um people it seems like people perceive me as a white woman and I had no idea of this um I've never seen myself as a white person I never have I mean I'm Latina and I'm Japanese um I've I find it bizarre to find out now that people have been perceiving me as a white woman this whole time because I started getting insults on TikTok of standard white woman white woman this white woman that and I'm like, what? I'm, 
how did these people see me as a white woman? It's weird. And I, as I started talking to people, yeah, they told me, Emily, are you not white? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm Latina. I'm, I'm Japanese. How am I white? And I still don't perceive myself that way. And um, I was actually a bit upset <laughs> that people were arguing back with me, telling me, no, Emily, I'm pretty sure you're white. And, hmm. and doctor's papers have always put Hispanic or other or Asian and other because I never thought I was white and um, I've spoken with my mom about this and um, she told me Emily you're perceived as white you're white you her parents are from from Italy my dad's mom's from Spain and she's like I think that that's kind of white to me and that's 75 percent of you so you're white just just go with that um, so I think that that's what I'm going to go with. She said, you're 75% sort of white. You're perceived as white. So just, just go with being white. <laughs> so I um, guess that's who I am right now. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> what, what happens if I fit in? Because I don't know. No, it sounds like a classic mom answer to me. Um, regarding your question about my perception of you, I never, I never looked at, at, at Emily, Emily Zium and thought uh, basic white woman. So I, that's just, that's just my, that's just my take. Um, but you know, other, you know, but that's, that's. So essentially you've, you, okay. Sorry. Uh-huh. And I say it's weird. Different people see you so differently. I mean. But again, like, I think we talked about, I've talked about myself a little bit on, because like, I feel like a person of no, almost no, no belonging. <laughs> Sometimes like, I don't, I don't normally view myself through any sort of specific lens of nationality or race or whatever. So, because um, I have a similar thing where I usually put down Hispanic uh, or for funsies, I'll put would prefer not to answer <laughs> or uh, or whatever just because um because of that because i i am spaniard and uh two-thirds spanish and one-third uh native american so uh i've never thought like i have the same issue as you essentially sometimes people are like oh you're, you're just straight white dude and i'm like well actually well actually um and then or whatever I don't know it's I I empathize that's why that's why I kind of when I look at you I, I don't I don't assume white but yeah I feel like we, there should be like a bracket for like people that look white but aren't like Pete Davidson <laughs> we're all Pete Davidson's <laughs> <laughs> a bracket for look white but aren't <sighs> It's, I think it's, I think they call that like white adjacent or something, but I don't, or white appearing, white appearing. Okay. So just to, just to conclude on that topic, you are now accepting, you're, you're, you're making an effort to accept that you are in fact, most likely, mostly just another white woman or what are you? <laughs> I I now am aware that people perceive me as a white woman, but I don't identify myself as a white woman. Does that make sense? I don't know if, I don't perceive myself as a white woman, but I am very aware now, and I wasn't before, I'm very aware now that that's how I'm perceived. Feels strange for me, but uh, I'm accepting it now and I understand it now. Yeah, so, okay. So I guess, I guess more of the, more of the thought is you are, more commonly more often perceived that way but i'm sure there are people that can see past that and understand there's more there's more going on there than that but yeah okay makes sense and that's kind of i guess it's probably similar to where my boat is because in los angeles there's so much there's so many different people around here too that i don't but still people like to that's one of the first thoughts that people seem to have is like categorizing your physical is like step one yeah, and that's so strange to me because I, I don't know, maybe because I'm from a multicultural background and I live in a place where 
the people that live here look very different than me. I see, if, I don't know, maybe, you know, Brazil is a very multicultural country as well, where, you know, there's very little segregation, everyone's in it together. Um, that I don't categorize people that way at all when I first see them. And whenever I find myself, you know, being asked, oh, you know, um, do you know that person? They were a certain caller. I'm like, I, don't, I know their name. I know what they look like. <laughs> I don't know if I paid attention to that. Um, and yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I know, I know these days, this might, I don't know if this is LA specific. You kind of hinted at it too when you mentioned Q and A's on Instagram, but I know it's been, it's becoming way too common for my comfort level, but people seem to be asking about uh, the, the birth dates straight away these days. Oh, X signs. It's like step one. Uh, even before asking, like currently, before asking, "What are you?" Like the the offensive question of "What are you?" People ask, "When were you born?" Is like the first, like just meeting somebody for the first time. Oh, when when were you born? And I'm like, secret. I'm not telling you when I was born, you punk. <laughs> <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> so is that uh, yeah, like. Oh, it's wow. crazy. I mean, I don't personally believe zodiac science per se, but I get asked this a lot. And because I've seen so many people talk about it on their stories and share about it, I decided that I was going to learn what this is about. So I've gone into extensive um, learning on zodiac signs and astrology, and I've accidentally memorized way too many things. And now whenever I talk to people and I explain these things to them, they think that I'm a person that's obsessed with astrology, but I don't even believe it. I just, you know, it was some very late nights that I had where I couldn't sleep and I just. So has, has, okay. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you don't buy into it because you are a person of science background. Like I'm assuming that that's your foundation like there's no i don't feel like there's science backing zodiac signs in any capacity where where there's like a scientific study where they take one hospital and they track all 300 babies that were born on this specific day during this specific time window and anal cross analyze it against the zodiac i'm sure there are i'm sure I've, I've heard of similar things it's not necessarily because i'm a person of science i mean i am christian despite being a scientist which a lot of people don't think makes sense um i just generally don't buy into it and i'm not even sure why i know a lot about it as i said accidentally <laughs> but um i don't believe it to be necessarily true i don't buy it at all <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of fun with it. It's absolutely fine. You know, speaking of the dates, this person that had the the script, he also told me his zodiac sign, which is like right off the bat within like half an hour in. And I was like, where on earth did that come from? I'm not into zodiac. I did not ask your wife. <laughs> I was just shooting his script so fast. So he was like, I'm a blah, blah. And I was like, okay, thanks for letting me know. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, yeah I'm assuming that line would land with most women I feel like that would work and yeah. would probably be really attractive to the right woman it's like oh this guy's in tune with it you know like that I'm, yeah either way <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah. all right well we're on the same page we uh great yeah I mean it's probably why we're best friends is because we we see eye to eye on so many things but with that, <laughs> she says, yeah, to like, oh, best friend, I'm just kidding. Um, we are okay. Here. Well, I feel like we've done, I feel it was a nice little, little rubbish, little rubbish sesh. Um, it was a nice little rubbish sesh, and now you're going to struggle making sense of this. A little bit, a little bit. I have to do more editing on this than I'm used to doing with all these different whatever it's fine it's all good beautiful lovely conversation it's lovely to have you back um, you. and I guess just just for the last last question well I don't know per usual I'll, I'll be keeping up with you 
and and, and keep it in touch. And, we'll, and I'll keep you accountable to uh, the podcast releases. I'll be checking in on the acting journey. You got lots going on. Um, so for others that want to keep in touch and be a part of uh, the fun that you got going on on your Instagram and more, uh, where where do people uh, and TikTok and, and Twitter and um, I am on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter as Emily Zium, all one word, E M I L I Zium. It's um, you're gonna have to type that in for me, Eddie, because nobody's gonna get the spelling right. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do. So check the title of the video or audio, and you'll see the spelling there. Very easy, first name, last name, perfect. Yeah. And just to remind everyone that I only have one Instagram account. There is a scammer out there with my pictures that say that they do OnlyFans, but those pictures are not mine. And you will be scammed. Good, good, good note for all those that bump into I that. Have, I have to put this out there because I get a lot of people in my inbox be like, I signed up to the OnlyFans and that woman is clearly not you. I'm like, wow. Oh my, and you're like, thank you for so, trying to support me. Here's my here's my uh, cash app account if you want to send me money. And you're not going to get anything in return, but I will take your money. No, that's, you're getting, you're getting the reviews for this other account. You're like, I'm disappointed with the service here. Um, please put accurate photo representation. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not happy that they're, um, they're not producing satisfactory content, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, great. Well, on that note, uh, thanks again. And um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's the show. Uh, bye everybody. Boom, 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 boom.